Warhammer and Games Workshop are considered British institutions at this point, especially for millennials, right? Because this hobby has been around since the 80s and it really picked up steam during the 90s and early 2000s because in the UK, almost every major city has, you know, a model emporium, Games Workshop where you can go, you can buy the extremely overpriced models and kits, and then of course you can play this tabletop game. An incredibly complex and deep tabletop strategy game which has been evolving and it's been reiterating on itself and the lore has also been being worked on and developed for decade after decade. And really what we have now is just an amazingly rich multimedia universe that in my case, I am more interested in the lore than I am the game. And don't get me wrong, I mean, the game looks really cool. And as a kid, I attempted to play it, you know, just messed around with it, had fun. But I consider myself a casual fan because for me, I just like to explore this incredibly deep, dark, heavy metal universe where, you know, as the tagline declares, in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war, right? And what we have here is an old school sci-fi universe dark as you can possibly imagine. I mean, Warhammer 40k is so dark, it almost becomes humorous, you know what I mean? Like, because the bleakness of the setting is off the charts. I mean, humanity in this grim, dark, far future, they're doomed, you know? To be a human in this universe is to be doomed. It's just a question of how close to utter annihilation you are, depending on, you know, what part of this vast galaxy spanning imperium of mankind that you're residing, I mean, <laughs> your life is completely insignificant. Like, if, if you're a member of the Imperial Guard, just the regular infantry, you are fodder, right? Your entire life is meaningless. Millions of Imperial Guard will die in one battle. And it's just simply the norm. You know, no one's gonna mourn you. It's a sacrifice that you have to make, right? Because the Imperium is a fascist state, and it's fascist not because of some kind of overly cringe social commentary that the, you know, that the creators of the game are making. The fascism is a necessity in Warhammer 40k. The Imperium have to rule with an iron fist simply because of how perilous the universe is. Not only do you have literal chaos gods, like Lovecraftian entities, that are bleeding into our plane of reality and creating like, you know, demonic incursions. Like that, we're, we're in the fantasy realm when we're talking about the chaos aspect of 40K. But that's just one side of this incredibly hostile universe. You have aliens, of course, but this is sci-fi. But the aliens in Warhammer 40K, they don't come in peace. In fact, the best that you're gonna hope for is, I guess the Tau who are communists, right? But And they're still going to kill you. But they're doing it for the greater good. They're weird alien pseudo-Maoist commie philosophy, and that's okay, you know? Because if you're a space marine, and you're one of the elite units of humanity, you, you'll you just crush them, because Xenos die. That's what they do. We kill the Xenos. We don't debate, we don't negotiate. In the name of the God Emperor of Mankind, you know, we are going to engage in exterminatus. In some cases, humanity will simply purge an entire planet of all life just as a precaution to contain the spread of either hostile Xenos or chaos. And humanity in this universe is not considered good. They're not presented as good. But neither are any of the alien races. The elves of this universe, they're called Eldar, right? So they're sci-fi elves, but they themselves are going through a profoundly fucked up period uh, you know, as a faction because millennia ago, these sci-fi elves, they achieved perfect harmony and perfect synergy with their technology. And that elevated their existence to just pure bliss. You know, nothing but the pursuit of pleasure and art. Like they, they achieved the progressive dream, right? Where oh, they'd solved every problem that there was to solve. Well. As time stretched on, right, the elves became more and more degenerate and their pursuit of pleasure became so sadistic and so twisted over time. This energy created by the partially psychic Eldar, this negative psychic energy, this birthed a new chaos god, Slanesh, this god of pleasure, lord of excess, the dark god 
dedicated to the pursuit of earthly gratification and the overthrow of all decent behavior. And funnily enough, actually, uh, a lot of the demons of Slanesh, while they are non-binary, in the canon of Warhammer 40k, and they're actually referred to as like a non-gender specific pronoun, so, hmm, you know, some food for thought there, a little, little spicy morsel for you there, but that came into being, and just by this god being born, it almost destroyed their entire race, and it split them off into two factions, and you have the Dark Eldar, who still pursue pleasure above all else, even to this day, and they are like gimps, you know? Like Sam Smith would be perfectly at home as you know, one of the incubi of the Dark Eldar, right? So that's where they're at, which is an interesting twist, I think, on kind of the elven trope that you get in fantasy, so I like that. Point is, I mean, the entire property, it's just an interesting, dark take on sci-fi and fantasy simultaneously. It's almost classical in its depiction of just how epic the subject matter we're dealing with is. I mean, when you look at some of the illustrations of the Horus Heresy, which is probably the most important cataclysmic event in the history of the Imperium, right? I mean, this is where everything kind of goes really wrong for humanity, okay? And, you know, I could go into that, but I won't now. But it's fucking cool. There's like dozens of books just dedicated to this one event. You get the picture. It's biblical in scope, right? So there's just something really based about Warhammer 40k that I enjoy it and I worry that at some point in the very near future, the cultural critics are going to try and fix Warhammer. And I'm pretty sure that the company itself, Games Workshop, has already been infiltrated by, you know, pro-trans activists and the usual wokey types. And they're demanding representation, diversity, you name it. But really, I mean, I don't expect Warhammer to escape what's happened to every other major franchise, major subculture traditionally enjoyed by white male nerds, and it was created by white nerdy British dudes for white nerdy British dudes. That's just the history of nerddom, because believe it or not, guys, there was a time when these very niche, very male-oriented, slightly autistic subcultures were comprised primarily of young, white, sometimes socially ostracized men. And that's what gave a lot of this stuff, its character, initially, in its origin. Later it opened up, and then women and POC and white leftists come in. And then they're going, well, this was always ours. And it's like, well, hold, hold the phone. See, most of these guys that were diehard nerds into Star Wars or video games or Warhammer, they weren't gatekeeping, they were very welcoming, and they were happy to have anybody of any identity group come and enjoy the hobby with them. Which makes the anti-white zeitgeist that's going on right now in entertainment in general just so disrespectful because is it really so wrong to ask that our culture be respected? You know, just respect it, don't change it, don't shit on it. Let it be preserved in the state that people found so appealing in the first place. Is that really so much to ask? Of course, that was a rhetorical question. Of course, it's too much to ask because we're not dealing with rational it's fair people, are we? We're dealing with like a Cambodian color revolution of cultural warriors that just want to destroy everything that was ever cool. And I can sense some controversy coming right around the corner with Henry Cavill's recent announcement that he will be producing a Warhammer 40k TV series for, I think it's Amazon. And, you know, on the surface, this seems like a dream project, but... Again, we've been here before when Henry Cavill was cast as Geralt in the Netflix's Witcher TV series, which on paper should just write itself. It should be a no-brainer, and all you have to do to make it work is just stick closely to the games. But Netflix are incapable of producing anything entertaining. Henry Cavill shows up on set, and these Jewish feminist writers are telling him, we don't care that you know everything about the character. We don't care that you know the lore from the books and that you have interesting takes on how this character is supposed to behave. You're a white male chud and we're going to do our best to humiliate you and diminish the significance of this character. You know, it's not going to be canon. It's not going to be cool. 
and all the other characters from this pre-established franchise. We're just going to cast random Somalian women, and it's the usual attitude, you know? Yeah, this isn't for you, retard. And like, well, hmm, it should be. I mean, you know, like, why should the Witcher TV series not be for fans of the Witcher video game and book? Why should any fantasy adaptation of an existing property be produced in opposition to the wants, to the expectations, and the enjoyment of the legacy fan base? It doesn't even make any sense. Like, why bother? The, the answer is because this entire system of entertainment hates white people for really fucked up reasons that are totally illegitimate. And it's not about good business, it's not about profit, it's not about entertainment, it's about hate. And in the case of Cavalhammer 40k, it is becoming clear that it doesn't matter how he approaches this Warhammer series, it's still going to be bad. And not because I lack faith in Cavill's ability to produce a good show and or his understanding of the source material. I think it's going to be bad because it's simply not allowed to be good. Under this current regime, it's impossible to produce a good 40k television series. Because again, like, how are you supposed to parse? the extreme like xenophobia the different factions the fascist imagery the the, the lack of female space marines and you know and women like there are sisters of battle by the way i mean if you want to have women involved just include sisters of battle in the show but you know what it's not really about sticking to the material it's about subverting the material it's about taking the material and turning it into propaganda you have an old school, handsome white actor like Henry Cavill, you know, six foot something Chad, who's also a gamer, right? And at some point in the last couple of years, a target has been painted on his back. And a lot of the journalists and a lot of the powers that be, the usual types, are, are, are calling for him to be sunset. And his career needs to kind of be over because it's time to make room for a new generation of diverse gay, non-white, you know, whatever. Whatever it is that Cavill represents, it has become too problematic to even humor it, right? Because despite being very neutral, staying very professional, not discussing his personal opinions and his politics in interviews, keeping a professional distance with his female co-stars, to, to the chagrin of journalists everywhere, calling him sexist and all this stuff. Fact is, he's being attacked because he wants to stay neutral. And that's the thing, isn't it? It's that in order to be an entertainment professional in this current year, it's not enough to just be apolitical. Excuse me, I'm an actor. I just want to act, right? Well, no, sorry. You need to be an asset of like the US intelligence agencies, a la Project Mockingbird. You need to be an activist at all times. Your movies are not entertainment, they're propaganda. And in Cavill's case, he needs to go because the optics aren't good. Because he's making white male gamers look too cool. And his fans are like Snyder chuds and they want to see him reprise his role of Superman. So we need James Gunn, soy drinking fucking pervert James Gunn. We need him to usher in a new generation of the DCEU. And even though we rehired Cavill, we're going to just dump him anyway, because simply casting Henry Cavill in a movie from this point onwards will be considered an act of white supremacy. It really wasn't that long ago when actors were cast due to their bankability. But really, when you look at Hollywood now, where are the old school actors, the ones like Brad Pitt, you know, and like Tom Cruise? I mean, they're still around. But their relevancy is fast dwindling and the torch is not being passed to an equivalent generation of similar actors. In fact, these days, uh, I guess Cavill, really, his seat at the table will be filled either by a black actor or a twink like Timothy Chalamet, who is as masculine as we're going to get, right? Superman will be played by fucking... Elliot Page, and it's going to be stunning, and it's going to be brave, and it's going to be, insert generic positive word, but definitely don't criticize it, because in the era of wokeism, the critique goes in one direction, okay? Don't think that all of this cultural critique is an invitation for you 
to do the same thing to them. Because they're right, and you're wrong. You see, they're in the right, and you're in the wrong. And it doesn't even matter what the context is. Just stop with the resistance. Stop with the squirming. Just sit there, okay? And it's time to eat the slop. This is a clockwork orange Rube Goldberg industry of woke cancer. And I have no illusions that Henry Cavill's attempt to produce a Warhammer 40k series is going to be fucking gay. And there's nothing he can do about it. In fact, it'll be a miracle if he can even get it produced before some kind of Me Too allegation springs out of nowhere and ends his ass for good. Because in 2023, the entertainment industry is post-Chad. 